Good morning guys, I'm on my way to the construction site. Unfortunately it just started to rain. So I don't know how the weather will be the way I get there. But I'm expecting pretty much similar. I looked in the weather forecast and it doesn't look good for this morning. So maybe I should have stayed in bed and got some extra sleep. But we'll see. Uh, there are a few things to do, a few things we can do, uh, even though it's raining. But I don't know if the guys are going to be willing to stand out in the cold and wet. So we'll see how it goes. If not, I'll do some administrative work, figuring out materials, suppliers, and you know, technologies and stuff like that. And it's also a big part of uh, construction. There's a ton of different materials, different ways to do things. And it's uh, always on me to figure out if I want to use this kind of bricks or that kind of bricks, this kind of hydro isolation or that, or that kind of hydro. In general, if you buy a project for a house, you'll get some info with it on uh, what technologies to use, but it might not always be the best or suitable for uh, what you're doing so or you know what you want maybe the house is uh, marked as uh, clay bricks and you want to build out of concrete bricks or silica or stuff like that so you can always change and you can always choose different stuff and to choose wisely you have to understand the pros and cons of each the uh, costs involved, the technology involved, everything, how everything works. So, you know, it just takes a while to get right and you cannot rush through some things because uh, some of the things like the hydro or stuff like that, hydro isolation, you cannot uh, change afterwards. Basically, we put it on the walls and then we covered everything with concrete and sand and concrete and, you know, it's gone, it's there and uh, it won't change. The same for uh, the isolation on the floor underneath the walls. Start, once we start building laying bricks, it's, uh, you know, it's done. We'll have to take the wall apart to change the hydro isolation of the floor. There's a lot of things like that on the construction site that you have to figure out in advance just to not have problems later on. And of course you can ask your uh, building site manager, the structural engineer, the architect, the, the general contractor for advice. But the final decision is yours and you have to own it. So yeah, research, research your stuff and be sure you're doing what you should be doing. Alright, I'll talk to you once I get to the construction site. Alright guys, it's uh, 8.30 now and it stopped raining so we can start working on the house. The guys are st setting stuff up and we'll start with, I don't know, maybe the walls. We'll see. You can still hear the concrete drinking water. It goes like, <laughs> like a chirping sound. It's funny. So the rain just helps the floor cure better, which is fine. It's like a chirping sound and it's not a bird, it's the concrete. It was the same when we came on the weekend to pour some water on the concrete the first time. It was really like birds singing. So we got the pump running and we're collecting the water into the tank. So 
when the drier time comes and we need to mix up some mortar we have some water it's uh, it's a little bit muddy maybe not the best but we'll do fine the idea was to put the bitumen mask here today but it's all wet so we're pumping out water and once it's dry we're going to heat up the tar paper to evaporate the remainder of water cleaned up and hopefully the concrete walls will be dry by then so we can start putting on the primer and then the bitumen bitumen mass all right we're starting with the uh, tar paper and uh, you can see it's uh, pretty heavy stuff it's uh, quite thick and impossible to break it has some reinforcements inside it's uh, also we bought a bit more expensive tar paper which has zero emittance so you won't feel the tar paper smell inside the house we heard it's a possibility that that could happen so we invested a little bit more in a special foundation tar paper the guys are setting up a bridge over the moat <laughs> to be able to roll stuff onto the foundation from the other side and uh, Mr. Jan and Arthur are cutting out the netting from the uh, bitumen mass the leftover netting that is uh, loose we're going to put tar paper down on top of it and we'll just remove it and it's raining again <laughs> Alright, so we're starting to run the cement mixer. We're going to make a M10, that's 10 megapascal uh, mix for uh, the mortar mix for the bricks. Arthur over there is cutting the tar paper into two strips, half a meter each for under the walls. And now for uh, M10 mix, you need a uh, one part cement for every four parts of sand. So I asked Mr. Pavel to figure out how much cement is in the bag. Just uh, concrete. So we use this uh, liquid instead of calcium. In the old days, the guys would uh, dig a hole, put a calcium inside, and uh, fill it with water, let it do its thing, and then have this like uh, butter sort of thing consistency that they would use together with uh, the cement and sand in the cement mixer to get the mortar. But nowadays they just use this uh, plastifying liquid which makes the mortar more pliable and easier to work with. The cement mixer is running and you can see the mortar inside. So for our uh, mortar mix we are doing uh, at least M10, that's 10 megapascals. The recipe is uh, one part cement, half a part of calcium, and uh, four parts of uh, sand 
We're using uh, we're using river sand, which is uh, doesn't have any clay in it or other uh, substances. It's just clear sand, like on the beach. It's been sieved, so there's no rocks inside of it. Because we're using this plastifier, we're not using calcium. So that is the recipe for M10, but actually. The guys are putting a little bit more cement to make it even stronger. We worked out that one bag of cement that is uh, 25 kilograms, it's about five and a half shovels. So maybe to be safe you would put 20 shovels of sand. And actually the guys are putting in 15 for every bag. So that would make the mortar mix even more stronger, which makes me happy. to meld the two together. We're going to burn some tar paper now. The previous concrete will just grind it off so it doesn't pierce through the tar paper. Here you can see the guys they built a drawbridge onto our castle. Basically just to put materials on top and we're going to leave the space for the doors and also the tall French uh, door windows we're going to have on the back. So we're uh, leaving spaces with blank concrete and then later on when we'll figure out the exact mounting system of the windows from the manufacturer we might build a layer of bricks or not depending on them so that is a time, thing for a later time putting down a second layer of uh, tar paper on the first one we have uh, two layers of tar paper in the project we want to avoid later errors from the contractors that will come later on to put in the tar paper so we're going to put in two layers finally so we are getting ready to put down the first brick Mr. Pavel has some mortar and the wheelbarrow and uh, we're going to put it on this corner first
And there you go, the first brick. Brawo, panie Pawle. Widziałem, że będzie dobrze. So Mr. Pawel is starting on the second corner, and then we'll grab the measurements to make sure the corners are in the right positions, and from there we can start uh, building the walls out. It should be 1485 and it is 1485. Cool. We'll do the second side. So Mr. Jan is putting down the tarp paper. The guys on the garage are priming the walls. And uh, Mr. Pavel here is laying down bricks. Everything is going fast and exciting. Pretty cool, precise to the centimeter. Awesome. And the guys, they delivered some more bricks. We have uh, plenty to work with. That's really good. So we took delivery of six more uh, pallets of bricks. And now Mr. Powell is setting up the last corner of the house. We're going to measure then diagonally to see if everything is square. So the measurement just has to be the same. The 1782, exactly the same as the other diagonal. The two lengths have to match, that means the building is square. I'm happy with this, really happy. It's spot on with a millimeter precision. And that's how it's supposed to be. And now we can start uh, putting down the first layer of bricks. So on the corner there's no, uh, I call it a male piece. So we're putting mortar in the holes of uh, the second brick and this is only on the corners and the parts where the bricks are cut. Normally you have these uh, three pieces that are sticking out on one side and they join up with these three grooves on the other but not in the corners. So You can see the string is resting on a nail so it's above the brick and it shows us how the wall should be on a straight and this way we can adjust the brick to run along the wall properly and not stick out. Three bricks per corner before we start uh, doing the lines. The guys here they're priming, priming away for tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a nicer day without this constant drizzle of rain. So we're going to put down the bitumen mass.
the first layer is coming out strong. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.